the webinar is about to start. Yep. Hello, everyone. This is Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support. I would like to welcome you to the webinar where we, we, are, where we would like to show you a workflow of virtual prototyping of a simulation of centrifugal fan. And we will be focused on centrifugal pump uh, CFD, FEA, FSI, and optimization workflow. We will do our best to show you what we have. We will show you what's our philosophy, what's our approach to pump simulations and in general turbo machinery simulations and hopefully you will have something about it and like it and let's see what we can do together in the future so uh, the, the webinar is about centrifugal pump but in general the principles are very very similar to other turbo machinery applications so it's not just a pump it's also very similar to, to turbines and uh, fans and compressors and uh, many other rotating machinery so that's important point the principles are very similar and uh, software is ready for that that's uh, uh, just a point that came to my mind and uh the webinar is being recorded so the recording will be later made publicly available so we can be sure that you can uh you can uh, watch it in the in your, in your leisure time so you do not need to catch everything right now and uh, there will be three parts in the first part there will be a general introduction in the second part there will be a more like technical stuff and in the last part there will be a q a session dedicated to your questions and our answers so feel free to ask your questions it's your time use it to the fullest we'll do our best to answer all your questions the most representative questions will be answered right away in the webinar uh, specific questions to to particular cases will be will be answered later via email but you can be sure that all the questions will be answered yeah so i'll start with the introduction uh, my colleague radek matza let's check the connection hello radek can you hear us hello lubos and hello to the audience yeah i'm here yes great to have you here so radek will take care for the technical part he will, he will show you some tips and tricks and uh, how to how to start things and hopefully i think maybe we can start so yeah. let's, let's go on. go ahead okay let's go ahead and perhaps we will switch the cameras off for for a while and maybe we will, we will get back later right okay. so yeah switching the cameras off for a while so see you later by at the end of the of the webinar so hopefully you can see my screen and uh, okay so I'll, I'll start with a little bit more general uh, topic uh, still by the end of the year there will be two more webinars uh, in two weeks there will be a webinar dedicated specifically to external aerodynamics so it will be cfd uh, and uh, yeah external aerodynamics applications so that's the next webinar on december 5 and we will close the webinar year by the at the end of the year close to the yeah uh, we will close it with uh, the kaplan cfd fea fsi and optimization so the kaplan turbine will be the the last webinar of the year so you you will be happy if you if you join us and discuss it with us okay uh maybe what i wanted to show in the beginning we have a couple of i would say videos we did in the past so i, I wanted to to show it to you so I'll start with a general talk that that we have like 15 years experience of simulating rotating machinery specific specifically it's CFD so it's computational fluid dynamics uh, simulations so that's that's what we are dealing uh, for years with and uh, yeah also we have developed a tool called TCAE and uh, that's that's uh, a software which, uh, in fact, it's a simulation environment which can help you to, to produce the results because engineers want to have the results, produce the results, not only just make, make research, but, but really it's important part of our job uh, to, to make the results. So in the past, we started with CFD. So we have really, really extensive experience with CFD simulations of rotating machinery, specific, specifically with pumps. We did a lot of pumps projects 
uh, all together we did maybe perhaps hundreds of rotating turbo machinery projects for the industry so so we uh, i would say uh, the experience is quite substantial uh, later we, we have added a uh, more physics to 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 the to the game so so for example in the in the latest release which is which is uh, yeah a couple of weeks old we have added uh, the the real physics the, the 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 particles which are which are physical that they can bounce each other and they can bounce the walls and and the pump can be simulated with them and and give you uh, even much more information than than just a pure pure fluid flow we have also added uh, FSI part, so so the the forces from the CFD can be can be uh, transformed to to the forces, and and used as a boundary conditions for structural analysis. So so TCA has also FEA part, which is uh, very useful and makes the workflow of 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 virtual prototyping of pumps even more complex. And uh, also we have added. Uh, uh, an optimization module which allows you to run a, I would say, simulation-driven workflow, which gives you based based on the results of of particular simulations, you can iterate to the to the optimization uh, function to the to the best goal. So that's that's we believe this this is really a big thing. And so so for many of our users, the the end goal and the, the highest the the highest uh, achievement is is running uh, simulation driven optimization workflow which 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 is which is really spectacular because it can give you the best result possible uh, which is which is uh, we believe the the future of 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 simulations so yeah we definitely my point is we definitely made have made um, a lot of simulations in the past they are specifically oriented to CFD and uh, additional multiphysics around uh, turbo machinery applications. Uh, TCA is a simulation environment, which which allows users to do everything in the uh, in the graphical interface. And of course, the batch mode is available, but uh, the the graphical interface is very important because it keeps you keeps the process uh, consistent and coherent, and and you can be sure that that you, you get never lost because because you can always get back to it. You have the process, you have current state of the process and really uh, makes your makes your workflow consistent. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess you know, but still TCA consists of software modules. So there are, there are a couple of modules that, that take care of, of particular, I would say, actions uh, for, uh, for the engineering operations. So it's split by it's divided into into software modules, and it's up to the engineer how to how to create how to set up the workflow because the TCAE simulation environment is extremely flexible, so it can work with commercial codes. With it can work just just itself without without any other codes, but it can it can be combined with commercial codes, in-house codes, uh, with open source codes, and uh, it's really flexible and and ready to fit any engineering workflow, so it's not just a it's a, not uh, just a one code ripped in the stone. It's it's extremely extremely flexible. So that's uh, another point. Uh, a lot of people like that for one price, TCAE is unlimited. There are no limitations on number of users, jobs, cores, hardware installations. So the users can use their resources to the fullest. And uh, another benefit of TCAE is it's focused. It's focused on rotating machinery, turbo machinery, and, and external aerodynamics. So it's not a general purpose code for everything. It's, it's tuned Formula One for specific applications where it's really good. It's well automated. It can be used as a black box on one hand, or it can be used as a totally high, highly sophisticated, open source, uh, transparent code where all the options are open. It, this is the choice which is always up to the user. So it's the user who decides how deep to go into the ribbit hole and uh, make all the settings or not at all. So that's uh, uh, this. Yeah, we did, we did a lot of benchmarks, uh, quite of them are publicly available 
uh, the CAE is, uh, yeah, it's designed for all the, all the, I would say, resources. So it can be run on laptop, desktop, on a PC cluster cloud. It can be run remotely from home or in Linux or in Windows. All the combinations are possible. And uh, again, what's extremely important is that the, all the particular software pieces uh, are based on open source and the open source is available and it's provided together with the package. So the users can be sure what exactly, what, what methods are in there. He can, he can change them if he wants and, and can. And uh, it's extremely uh, transparent for this reason. We, we know how to pick all the best of all the open sources around the globe, I would say, and put it into, into this package. So that's extremely, this package is extremely powerful because we are a relatively small company, CV support, uh, but a lot of work has been done already and we know how to make it available for the users. So that's extreme power uh, of open source used in TCAE. And by the way, we have spent more than 40 many years of dedicated development of this software in a team. So it's really, really, uh, uh, a lot of work has been spent, a lot of effort has been spent. So it's really, really a big thing, a huge value provided to, to the users for, I believe, uh, uh, acceptable, accept, acceptable price. We have just released a new version, uh, TCAE now called 23.10. It's uh, packed, it's ready for use. Uh, there are a lot of Again, the new new functions, capabilities, uh, certainly, absolutely, the best version we ever had, and uh, it's ready uh, for the future challenges. In the next releases, we will we will spend uh, a lot of effort, and we will focus on the optimization, which we believe it, that's the future of accurate simulations. We will. We will focus on acoustics simulations. We believe that's uh, really a sweet spot for for all of us and uh, for the software itself. And for sure, the biggest thing we are working at is is the is the new software module called TBase, which will allow the users to save all the results, pick the best of it, create his own surrogate models, and get the results of the, I would say, preliminary, prelim, preliminary designs in a second instead of hours or days. And it will be a really, really a big thing because since the AI and, and scientific machine learning methods has rise in the recent uh, past, you can be sure that, that it will change also our field this field of simulations. The, the, the data, I'm absolutely sure of that all the data has been stored and used and, and we have to take the lesson of them. So that's what we are currently working at. And uh, you know what? This would be it from this initial part. And I will ask Radek to give his part. Radek, are you with yes. us? Yes. Yes, I'm still with you <laughs> and ready for the so part. I'm switching the presentation over to you. Okay, so you should see my screen now, we can. I guess. Yes, we can. Yes, okay. we can. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Lubosh. And let's go for the second part of this webinar. And here I would like to show you some kind of workflows. And today I would like to focus more on the inputs and outputs of the TCAE than to to workflow itself because we have shown the standard work workflow many times so today i would like to focus more on the inputs so what do you need to have before you start working with dca and importing geometry and then what 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 you get from from the simulation and where to see and how how to see the results so just to mention at the beginning that Again, several case studies can be found on our web, web pages. So, for example, you can find there this classical centrifugal pump. You can also find this spe specific pump. So, you will find several examples here, which you can try by your own if you will start TCE in the future or ask for the trial license. And today, I would like to focus on 
on the inputs more or less and discuss discuss the the uh, possibilities how to input import and create the input data so i will borrow this tca training which you can download by your own on your site and i will focus on this cv input requirements part so let me let me go through this presentation and maybe i will i will show you some life examples of how to import the geometry so to start creating the workflow you need to have the the input geometry which describes your machine properly and which has some specific parameters and uh, properties which you need to have to to get the perfect trustable and awesome results basically <laughs> so on the on the next uh, next uh, uh, desktop I will show you the life example so basically today I, I have created simple geometry of, of the radial pump with secondary flow path so I use CF turbo for it but I, I have let's say kind of two version first one is that CF turbo generated all the STLs in the given format in with, with the given properties which are directly usable and on the other side I have also exported the step file which needs to be somehow preprocessed in some CAT, CAT software. And I will show you basically the basic principles of it. Because if you if you download the tutorial from our web pages, everything is perfect and there are no 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 issues, no starting issues. So you just take the geometry and you can create a very nice workflow with, with nice results at the end. But if you, for example, you have just the CAT, um, CAT geometry. Uh, with uh, let's say a rough design including all the stuff for the for the manufacturing it so you then you need to pre-process this and make it ready for CFD simulation so basically what you need to achieve if you'd like to create your own mesh you need to have the set of STLs which properly describes your input geometry now let me let me discuss the parameters of it so First of all, what you need to have is the geometry of flow path. Yeah, so which means is the path or the cat parts of the geometry which defines the flow domain. We call it wet surface. So all the parts which touches the the uh, touches touches the fluid needs to be needs to be exported and all the rest, the out, uh, outside part of the solids and etc. You don't need to have it in the in the model which will be ready or which will be used for the meshing so first pass part of the preprocessing of your geometry is to create the wet surfaces so basically you need to have just the flow part uh, and that's it for for the first let's say for the first task in the preprocessing the second one basically during the creating this wet surface you need to take uh, in your mind that uh, the, the surface should be as simple as possible yeah because any specific part any tiny details in the geometry will will make the meshing process much more complicated it will eat more cells which uh, which results in the very fine mesh and long simulation time yeah so you need to somehow use your experience and make it as simple as possible yeah so you you should throw any details which not affect the overall machine parameters or the parameters you would like to get from the simulation and you need to in, increase or you need to keep all the details which affects which affects the flow pattern and the final final simulation parameters or the results basically so now to to work with the geometry and to set up the the uh, inputs for the t mesh is that you need to have a component thinking we, we call it in this way it means that to create properly uh, the geometry and to be ready for the cfd simulation you need to somehow in the turbo machine, turbo machine field so we can directly apply it for the centrifugal or any kind of pumps is that you need to split the domain 
you would like to simulate into the stator and rotor parts because then you need to explicitly define which part is rotating which part of the rotating part is rotating like the walls etc so basically this splitting into the component components is basically uh, kind of uh kind of it has to follow follow this rotor stator splitting so if we say take a general centrifugal fan geometry so we have the wet surface we have the closed domain so we need to split it into the meaningful parts which in this case could be for example the suction pipe let's say the rotor part including all the rotor rotor surfaces rotor rotating walls then, for example, we have the volute itself, and then, for example, some kind of exten extension or outlet piping. And these four components has should be defined by the separate STLs, as I will show you later. So basically, the first work to prepare the STL geometry is to have this kind of splitting. So, for example, if I if I take, if I open some kind of general CAT, CAT, CAT software, so I will, for example, use this Salome, which is open source. So let me let me open it, and now I will I will load just the step geometry, general geometry of this surface surface area. So let me import uh, the step file. I will find it on my D drive webinars today's webinar and from CF Turbo I have just exported this STLs yeah, so I have okay I don't want to convert it from millimeters to meters and basically I have these four domains which already follows this component thinking so I will be able for example to define all the all the parts of the rotor or of the volute so basically now i am in this step so my input geometry is split it to to define its components and then the next part is to focus on each let's say component and split the component surfaces into the meaningful meaningful parts physical boundaries for which the specific boundary conditions can be applied. And for each boundary, we can have a specific mesh parameters. So for example, oh, let's, so let's start for, for, begin, for very beginning. First of all, what we need to have is the inlets and outlets and the walls, which are rotating and not rotating, because each of this part will have different boundary conditions. Some will be inlet or inlet interface, so interface which is connected to the next component, or it has, it will have the, the uh, property that some part is rotating, some part is not rotating. So therefore, we need to have this splitting into the meaningful part. And for example, for the blade itself, we can have the split, splitting to the uh, leading edges, trailing edges, because then we can apply a high level of refinement to resolve the shape of highly curved areas in more detail, and uh, which will increase the accuracy of the final result because the mesh describes the shapes uh, in more detail. So these parameters has to be taken in, into account or these properties for splitting the domain. So how to do that? So for if you have any general kit, so you can basically do do the splitting. So here, for example, if I have this nice shape, I can create uh, the groups, which I can name. So for example, let's start let's start with the inlet. So I will take yeah this part, which will be uh, defined, for example, as volute inlet so i will take the string then i can go for for this part which will be the volute outlet then for example for the meshing purposes i can extract just this cut water area because it's highly curved area and i would possibly i would like to apply high level of refinement to nicely resolve this curv curvature here and uh, basically to ha have a nice meshing of this part so i will 
explicitly define it, define it as a separate part. So let's say cut folder. And then I have the rest. So for example, here what I can do is to take the already the part, I will hide them. So the rest, as you can see, is just the volute wall, uh, which I I will take as a one one part. So this will be volute wall. So now I have all these parts defined separately in the CAD, and then I can export them separately. Yeah, so let's show it later. And then we can go for the next parameters is that the interfaces of the connecting components has to be perfectly aligned. What does it mean? It means basically that the inlet into the volute, the inlet part to the volute has to have the same shape as if I take the impeller, so the outlet uh, outlet from the from the impeller. Yes, yeah, so this this part has to be same as the volute inlet. Yeah, so this needs to be this needs needs to be followed for all the all the components and for all the interfaces to have a perfect matching for perfect transformation of the information from one component to the to the other component. Yeah, so it has to be it has to have the perfect alignment. So no no extension on on one side is allowed because then the information is somehow distorted and you don't have you will not have very good accuracy of the results on the interfaces itself, which in influence the overall, overall results. Okay, one uh, one thing where you can, where this uh, property uh, can be somehow uh, not followed is that for the for the segment geometries, it means for the for the circumferential symmetrical shapes like yeah axial machine typically or or radial impeller itself that if you have if you uh, export or if you create the geometry as just for the segments so some kind of periodic geometry periodic uh, yeah, periodic shape then you you can uh, imagine that the full interface of the of the full geometry full wheel geometry has to have the perfect alignment and not uh, for each segment of 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 the full wheel geometry so basically these positions are allowed and you just need if you if you create the kind of virtual interface for from both sides then these virtual interfaces has to be aligned perfectly yeah so for this it holds and then because for example uh, the snappy x machine which is part of the meshing of of uh, or in tmesh uh, needs to work with stls which is kind of first kind of uh, discretization so these kind of certain geometry surfaces has to be discretized has to be tri triangulized and exported as stl so it means the discretized let's say geometry has to be generated and exported. And here you can create a first, let's say mistake, or, or you can create a first inaccuracy that the export is too rough. Yeah, so maybe I will, I will show you then later, which will affect also the results on the, on, on the curved areas mainly. So here is the example of the pressure distribution, I guess, on some kind of, axial machine blades and you can see two two uh, two versions one with the rough stl triangulization and one with the very fine and you can see the contours that basically you will see the low accuracy even on these shapes because there are some kind of zigzag shapes which are caused by the rough triangulization which makes the the uh, the surface pretty rough, causing some kind of rapid changes in curvature between the triang uh, triangles, which will affect the results and, and for example, the pressure distribution from which the forces and torque is evaluated. So basically, 
this is the first kind of error in your solution even you 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 haven't started the simulation yet so you this is the first kind of error you will put into your workflow so therefore the triangulation the triangulation has to be has to be fine enough all right so the second uh, influence of the rough triangula triangulation is um, the additional error on the on the interfaces where the information has to has to be transferred so if you have the different triangulation it means that the corresponding triangles on the both sides has different let's say normals which will affect then the mapping or transferring the information and additional error will occur in the in the final in the final results and also uh, the last thing to mention which is connected to the uh, roughness of the triangulization that if each part is exported separately so for example the, the cat software can't doesn't see the neighboring stls together then uh, some kind of gaps or holes can be created which can then affect the meshing that the mesh basically leaks out from the from the domain or the mesh engine doesn't see the shape as a as a closed so it will just uh, create the mesh basically from both sides of your of your geometry closed geometry originally so if you go back to the back to the cat so typical typical uh, outputs of well, some kind of general cat could be uh, this one so if i take for example this volute which we have already split it and now i can use a simple export directly into the stls so i will export it as it is yes yeah, so so it uses some kind of random <laughs> random triangulization for these shapes and when we look on these shapes so they are generated here so i will open it for example here so i will load it into the paraview and i will open for example the volute uh, wall and for example the inlet to the volute i will show you the triangles which were created yeah so this is kind of you can see that the, the default one was very very rough surface fit edges and additionally because we had exported in this default uh, gen um, triangulization generator or whatever then you can see that for this kind of rough and random triangulization we can see the holes here so the shape is pretty rough it's the first bed property and the second one there are pretty big holes at the neighboring neighboring component yeah, so this this you need to always take in mind that the export has to be done properly so one option is to is to go back and for example the volute wall export with a with kind of finer triangulization so let's increase the finest of the export and the same i will do for example for the import uh, so again i will increase the triangulization and if i go back and i will Open again the same two same two STLs. Okay, so first the wall and the second, for example, the inlet. And I will I will visualize the triangulization. So now you can see yeah, the triangulization is much finer. Also for the volute. So you can see that these gaps are much smaller, but still there are. But if you if we for example refine it even more then we neglect these this property of this kind of export so always it's much better to have a finest finer refinement than than rough refinement of the of the surface when exporting for to the to the stl format or the second approach which some cat has is to create the fine triangulization so 
typically some kind of net gen or any kind any other uh, techniques for the mesh triangulization or surface tri triangulization can be applied so we can create new surface 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 discretization so here i can use the net gen i can create some kind of parameters so the maximum and the minimum size of the triangle so let's start with some rough triangulization now i can cre create it and again for example now with this engine we can see that it creates the point to point uh, uh, triangles even at the neighboring components so this is nice because we don't have any any gaps any any we don't have any any holes in the geometry and but but in this case for example there again the surface refinement is too rough so we can go for for the finer machine so we can adjust the the uh, triangle triangle size or let's Let's stick, for example, with these. So maximum five millimeters, and the minimum size will be two millimeters. And, and now we, we have very fine surface with no holes, no gaps. So this is perfect input for the for the meshing. And this basically you will done for each component for each part of the geometry which for example the final export from cf turbo do so this is the best you can have so, so this is the let's say first task for the engineer when creating the geometry which is ready for the for the meshing for cfd purposes so in case of stls it has to follow these several simple rules to have a nice input which from which you get nice nice results okay so when you when you have all these kind of geometries and stls then you can go to the to the to the gui you can load all the geometries in the tmesh tmesh module so for each component you load the particular stls for which you describe the mesh parameters like the background mesh size, refinement at the walls. And because you have split it, for example, the, the, the rotor blades into several parts, so then you can adjust high level of refinement for the leading edge. Uh, you can have, for example, lower level of refinement for the suction and pressure side, and then you can play with, with the parameters. Uh, so basically you have more options how to tune how to tune your mesh all right so maybe in, in during for the workflow what i would like to show you is for example here a new multi-physics which we implemented or kind of evaluation so this yeah this simulation i run some few few hours before before our webinar so it's still simulating so i will take simple geometry without the secondary flow part and let me show you about this new feature or improved feature of evaluation some kind of cavitation parameters <clears throat> so if you go to the multi-physics uh, you can for water like uh, application you can you can enable the cavitation risk for the steady state simulation so even for from the steady state simulation you will get some information about the cavitation and here uh, in the cavitation risk parameters you define the cavitating patches so you will you will denote from which surfaces you would like to evaluate some kind of cavit cavitating parameters particularly it finds some minimum or some kind of histogram pressure values for evaluating cavitation number or uh, net positive suc suction head required etc and also you would need to define what is the lower pressure patch so typically the patch at the suction side so typically the inlet and the high pressure patch which is basically the outlet for evaluating the overall head or some kind uh, some kind of parameters of some kind similar to to the head 
values. So here we have inlet, outlet is the high pressure, and we would like to avoid kind of pressures just from the blades of the impeller. What is also a new feature that you can define a custom saturated vapor pressure. So if the fluid doesn't correspond to the water, so then you so it's come so it's different fluid, which has a different properties of this saturated pressure. So then you can adjust your own value of the saturated pressure, which corresponds to your fluid properties. Okay, and which values are evaluated for this cavitation field? So for this, you can again go for our web pages and you can find, find it in the manual. So if you go to the documentation page and you open the TCE manual, so then you will find some in the theory section, the cavitation modeling, where this cavitation risk or multi-phase cavitation is, is described. And for this steady state evaluation, the cavitation risk, for example, computes for the for the cavitation index, which is described here, and for the net positive suction have suction head available and required. And for example, the required net positive suction head computes is computed from, from the basic values at the lower pressure side and at the histogram. So it uses some kind of histogram values at at the rotor parts, for example, if you choose it. So in our in our case, on the blades, and it evaluates the minimum pressure. And because if you take just the minimum pressure on the on the blade, then it can happen that because of the of the meshing and because of the numerics, there is some kind of very very low pressure in in a single cell or in few cells because of some numerical reasons or meshing reasons or whatever and then basically because we are in the incompressible mode that the values are either bounded or very very low so it will somehow distort the, the overall evaluation so therefore some kind of histogram methods is used that for example in this case 0.5 percent of the surfaces with the lowest pressure values are thrown out and the minimum value is taken from the rest. Yeah, so from the resting 99.5% of the surface, the minimum value is taken. And in this way, it, uh, the, all these parameters are evaluated. And when we go to the output, so when we see the, for example, the final report, for this kind of simulation with the cavitation risk enabled. So we can go to the section with the cavitation risk, which is some somewhere near, near the end of the report here, so cavitation risk, which will, again, it will show you some kind of uh, cavitation, cavitating volume or cavitating surface for each simulated point. And newly, there is the cavitation index, which is evaluated for using this histogram method. And finally, this kind of posi uh, net positive suction head. So the blue one is the required, which is just the computed from the total pressure at the inlet and the saturated water pressure. And these values are again computed uh, from the again from the properties at the inlet and from the minimum value of the pressure. So we can see that some kind of all on the surface or or all let's say variants there 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 is a cavitation which occurs somewhere at the, at the blades because because the required head is higher than the available head so to get rid of this cavitation you would need to increase the pressure at the inlet basically so this is kind of first analysis even for steady state simulation of your cavitating cavitation properties of of your machine and to for example to physically see where the cavitation occurs you can you can visualize the results so if i go here to the manager and i will show the cfd results and for example i will just load the cavitation field so let let's read the results and Okay, let's go. OK, 
Okay, yeah, here. So this is the first, yeah, this is the first result for the highest flow rate, I guess. So now what we can do, for example, I will I will visualize it this as wireframe to see to see the shape and to see the blades inside the geometry and uh, above above this I will visualize the cavitation field and I will find the threshold because this cavitation field denotes the cells which which can cavitate basically all the cells with the pressure below the saturated uh, uh, vapor pressure value so I will would like to visualize just the positive one and I will highlight it them with some bright color for example yeah, with the red one so now we can see all the all the cells for the highest flow rate which which are cavitating and the same we can do for other other flow rates so these are the higher flow rates and this is I think the highest flow rates we have simulated so you can see that for every point and every boundary condition so uh, the, the cavitation occurs and you you see when when it happens so you can read the cavitating results both from the HD, HTML report and also from the yeah visualization itself and maybe the last part to show you so if you go to the if you go to the to the results to the project folder which is this one radial pump webinar and if you go inside to the simulation point simulation run into the tcfd so this case was run as stationary and here in the post processing you will find all the integral values <clears throat> evaluated for this pump so for example the cavitation is stored in this STLs, uh, not STL, CSV files, so you can anytime open it in the uh, uh, Excel sheet or library office sheet, and you can follow all the surface, all the quantities like the cavitation surface, all the sigma cavitation index values for each histogram uh, value, and also this uh, these net positive suction heads, and the same. You can read for all the quantity we evaluated on all the interfaces, like at the suction side to the impeller. Again, you can you can open it. You can take all the values you need, create your own graphs. So this is kind of uh, outputs you can have. So first output is definitely the the results which you can visualize with all the fields which are evaluated so like velocities mean velocity so mean means the averaged one over the averaging window you have applied uh, cavitation field turbulent quantity field fields uh, pressure fields and some kind of uh, post-processing for example for visualization of the turbulence for the turbulence visualization uh, purposes there are vorticity, magnitude, Q criterion, etc., which you can newly apply or ask for directly from the GUI. In the runtime evaluated quantities, you can ask for these uh, turbulent quantities to be evaluated, yeah, like Q vorticities, etc. The second, the second output is the HTML report with all the quantities. Uh, important for each simulation type so for the pump like the flow rate residuals head uh, efficiency efficiency map so not nicely nicely plotted you can also read the convergence of the efficiency uh, to see if everything goes well if there are no oscillation and and, and etc again for the torque axial forces radial forces on the impeller itself power etc etc and last output are the csv files which you can find on every interface on the inlet outlet and all all the interfaces between components and the final for the efficiency defined <clears throat> which includes the basic and the main parameters of your machine 
including all the quantities listed in the HTML and many others, like static pressure difference, total pressure difference, some kind of these axial forces, for example, and etc. So I think this is it, what I would like to say today, and maybe Lubush will continue or make some additional notes and not we can go for the last part of the of the webinar uh yeah thank you Radek. thank you very much yes indeed uh let's go ahead with, with the webinar uh it was it was great thank you for the explanation i will allow myself the uh, a notice which i say it pretty often <laughs> but i yeah. can help myself all this what have you, what you have seen it can be automated so you definitely do not need to do everything all the time and you definitely do not need to understand everything on the on the expert level so most of the things most or almost everything can be automated and th then you just use it just use it use it use it and produce the results so i hope we we don't confuse you with we, because we want to explain uh, many details, but uh, but you can definitely get things automated and get help from our technical support. So so it's not a, a rocket science. It's a there are, it's a quite a, a lot of specific information, but but you, you you do not need to know all of them in the beginning, but to to really go step by step. That's what we recommend, and uh, yeah, that's that's what what my, that's my point. That's my point. So I will. I would like to ask you, ask you all, ask I was ask the audience to ask your questions, and uh, we will we will pick pick some questions and 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 answer them if we find them representative, and everything will be answered via email, if necessary. So, <clears throat> what do we have here? So, uh, Vanessa is asking uh, under mesh input there is. Uh, the option uh, of using uh, multi-solid STL, uh, and yeah, what's the dif difference to the classical approach? Uh, Radek, would you like to answer this, or will yes, you... yeah, yeah, sure, I can. So the only difference that STL can be defined in the two ways: first, that each part, each patch is defined in a separate STL, or basically, if you if you copy paste each STL into a single file, then you get the multi-solid, multi-solid STL file. Yeah, and these two has to be treated separately, so it is defined as two different inputs, right? So, so it's just the difference that if you have basically, it's like you have all the STL file separate one, copy paste into the single file. It's the only difference. Okay. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it's it's not a big difference, and there is no. Uh, I I don't I don't think there's any any advantage of this, right, Radek? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Asking about about if there are some some benefits uh, of using uh, just uh, one uh, multiple multi solid STL, but but I I don't think so. We we use it internally when 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 the data are uh, uh, loaded into into the software. Uh, and you choose the option uh, that the data will be imported, so which which are in in some cases it certainly makes sense. Then we use this uh, multi-solid approach to to have very wide range of, of methods used internally. But 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 for the user, I don't I don't see uh, any met, uh, any 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 benefits right away to use multi-solid STLs, right? So if you can, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, we, we would recommend to 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 stay with old good uh, multiple stl files like individual files that's that's my point okay. um, yeah and also uh, vanessa is asking if if she can change the background color uh, from the dark to the light uh yes it's possible you can you can do it in the in the in the view options i think i think i have a window here okay. i could show <laughs> i could show it i hope you, i hope you can see uh, the pump, I think it's in the view. Let me see. In the, in the, you can you can change the background. Uh, we we already quite got used to uh, use this uh, the, this gray color, 
but you can you can you can you can use this and then you you should also play with with the with the legend which is which is certainly possible in the in the yeah in in the other menu but 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 yeah it's very very flexible and uh, everything can be can be changed uh, according to your uh, to your you know, preferences uh, when you are really sure you want to keep it then then you can save it to to your default with clicking to this to this icon and it changes your local local settings on your particular uh, computer uh, th that in, in windows it's the that json file uh, in in uh, in linux it's uh, yeah some 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 other text file but uh, you can you can uh, you can you can make it default if you like for your workflow and and you sure you you want to keep it and the, the, the all the all the changes all the modifications can be restored to the default uh, if you, if you just simply remove the the, the default or, or specific configuration files so, so it's it's pretty safe so you can you can do that if you like uh, okay so it's it's the customization it's quite possible uh, um, well, I I can't see any, any more representative questions at the moment. Uh, Charles is asking something, but but mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 I think it's very in, very specific, individual. So so we, we can answer it answer it after the webinar. And uh, Radek, I think this would be it. This is gonna be it. Three minutes to four, so perfect time to end. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah yeah yeah. So in any case, feel free to ask your questions. Anytime will be also uh, we'll, we'll be always happy to to answer them. It's our job. It's we 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 picked it, and we do all the simulations and and virtual prototyping and software with with uh, I would say a laugh and with uh, a lot of enthusiasm. So feel free to get back to us anytime. Here are a couple of those who already share our visions with us, and I think we can. We can conclude really this is really it so Radek, the last word yeah thank you for watching and if you have any feedback or any question or any command do not hesitate to contact us we are looking forward to discuss any topic with you <laughs> absolutely absolutely so thank you everyone thank you for coming and let's keep in touch and definitely see you somewhere sometime yeah, thank you bye-bye take care bye-bye Thank <laughs> you.